Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. They are safe. They are safe. They are safe. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank God on tonight. Father, you are our matchless Savior. God, there is none like you in all the earth, O oh Lord. Father, we have searched all over and still has not found anyone quite great as you. Thank you, Lord God, for sustaining and keeping us throughout this week, O oh Lord. Thank you for embracing us with your presence, Lord God. Thank you for delivering us, Lord God, from every trespass, Lord God. Thank you most of all, Lord God, for giving us another opportunity to enter into your gates with thanksgiving, O oh Father, and into your house of courts with praise, O oh God. We're thankful tonight, Lord God, and we bless your holy name because you are God and God alone, because you are Savior, you are Keeper, you are King, you are our everlasting joy, and there is nobody greater than you in all the earth. Deliver, Lord God, heal, set free, Lord God, rebuke, exalt. Oh, Father, God, because you love us and are concerned of us. And we say thank you on tonight for those that are here in the building, for those that are watching us live online, oh, God, and for those, Lord God, that are on their way. Bless, protect, and shield them, Lord God. And thank you for our ears being open to hear from you on tonight. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, that's good right there. That's good right there. See, when you love him and you know that he's done some great things for you, you begin to clap your hands in acknowledgement to know that God is still doing great things. There's nobody greater than him. And I just want to say to all of those that are watching on tonight, those that are live here in the building, we thank God for you. Those of you that are out there watching, that are tuned in, we bless God for you on tonight. This is still the day that the Lord has made, and tonight we get the opportunity to rejoice and be glad in it. So we're thankful, we're blessed of the promises that God has in store for us on tonight, this evening. I'm blessed, you're blessed, we're all blessed. Got the birthday girl in the house. Sister Bet is in the house. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Happy birthday to you. It's such a beautiful thing when we can see another year, what God is doing and continually doing in and through us. And I'm excited, y'all, tonight. I'm excited all the time because when you start to think about the goodness of Jesus, you get so excited. You get reminded of how great God is and has been in our lives and then the expectation of what God has in store for us. So on tonight, we're going to jump right into it. We are, we, we're coming up on the last week of February, y'all. The last week of February. And I'm, I'm really glad that God is doing all that he's doing in our lives. And even if you don't think God is doing anything in your life, just keep on praying. Just keep on believing. Y'all know the song that we sing, uh, the, the latter part of it says, um, uh, Cheesh, just keep on praying. The Lord is nigh. What is this? What's the prayer room? In the prayer room. And I like the end part. That's, the, that's my favorite part. That's why I can't never remember prayer room. But yesterday, when, when the phone systems went down and you got major networks that interrupted the earthly airwaves, and I said, people were just like, I, I know when my husband's, his phone, mine didn't go down, but his did. And he was saying, what is going on? What's happening? I'm doing all the searches and I started sending, you know, um, like troubleshooting to his phone and all that other stuff. And when I realized everything that I tried to do in my natural human power, nothing was able to stop what was being done. And I, I thought about that thing and I said, we have to have a greater circuit. Where our circuit, no matter of what the world is trying to shut down, our circuits are never caught off guard. We always have an avenue and a way of connection. And I said, if the world panicked for that short moment, 
of three networks shutting down to stop you from conversation and created interference in the earth realm. We have to be so sharp and accurate in the heavenly realm that we will never allow an interference like that in our spiritual life to go down. Because the enemy, if he can catch us for a moment to get concerned in a breakage of anything that is going down in our lives, then the enemy will keep introducing breakages through our lives. But God, tonight, as we're finishing out, we got one more week or half of next week in the truth series. God said tonight, why God loves us. Why he loves us. See, you got to realize God made the plan for everything that we need so that that way we would be sure that anything that comes along, anything that comes up against us, the, uh, the authority and the certainty to know that God has already made a master plan for us, that is the direction and the thing that we're after. And sometimes it becomes difficult to understand how could somebody love us so much that he did everything for us. And all his response is looking for from us is obedience. He said, I'm not looking for you to come and pay me back because you could never pay God back. You don't have enough in your bank account. You don't have enough creativity in your words to be able to speak and tell God how much you thank him for what he's done. He said, but what you can do is be obedient to the word that I've already put in you, that I'm making available around you, that I'm showing you through every area and element of your life. And that's why I'm letting you know how much I love you. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter number 2. We're reading everything out of the CEV on tonight. 1 Peter chapter number 2. And we're going to read two verses out of there. We're going to start at verse number 9. Why God loves us. 1 Peter chapter number 2. Verse 9 out of the CE translation. And it says this. But you are God's chosen and special people. You are a group. So he, he turned around and told us that we're God's chosen, singular. So you got to first know what God means to you to know that God thinks the most about you. Before he can match us up and put us together in a group with a culture that the kingdom has to continue to keep demonstrating to the world. He said, I first got to isolate you and remind you why I love you so much. When he said you are God's chosen and special people. We treat ourselves as though we don't recognize that there's an inheritance that has been assigned for us, that our life has already been mapped out for greatness. Anytime you find a king or queen, the princes and the princesses of that kingdom, they already know their rightful inheritance. So they act like it before they even receive it. They walk in it. They talk like it. I, I laughed the other day. I don't know how in the world Beyonce and Blue Ivy keep getting on my timeline in, in my, my, uh, my, my Facebook timeline. But the other day, as I read this today, I don't know why they came up. Because the Lord knows I'd be praying for them. And I said they lead that girl into a place of darkness like it ain't never been exposed. But I watched something. I watched her at the Super Bowl act like she was already royalty. I think she's 12 years old. But because her mother is putting her in all these platforms and arenas and areas, she ain't arrived there yet, but she's acting like she's arrived there because she's around what she's around. Now imagine you being who you are because what God said, you're my chosen, you're my special people who I called you priests and you're acting like you don't know who you are. He said, because when you know who you are, you talk like you know who you are. 
You operate like you know who you are. I had a conversation today, and I know she's going to tell it on Sunday, or I may tell it for her because she was excited today. My sister-in-law called me today, and she said, Sis, first of all, she was on like 10 when she called 1010. She was screaming in the phone. And my first thing, because I heard a bunch of noise in the background, I said, is it, is it the fire department, the police department? What is it? But it was just her background. Because she said, I had to run out the office, and I picked up the phone to call you. She said, because, sis, I'm sitting here with an email in my hand that just came through my phone. Listen to this. That God canceled every one of my student loans. I thought about you today. The, she said every single one was forgiven and my letter showed that I got zero balance on every single one of them. The first thing she said, she said, oh my God, I know who I am. She said, I'm a tither. She said, I've been worshiping. She said, I've been hearing God's voice. I've been speaking what he told me to speak. I've been doing what he asked me to do. She said, and this is the result of this? She said, there is nothing right now that nobody can tell me that God can't do. See, it's understanding why God loves us. God said, I want to prove to you who I am constantly. So it tarry, though it tarry, wait on it. Because when he said, you're my chosen, I don't care about the earthly timetable. Because the earthly timetable is not God's heavenly table. Your time, your thoughts are not mine. I could do this at the drop of a dime, but a drop of the dime for you might be a week, might be two weeks. I told y'all Tuesday night, the sister Danielle, sister Danielle's co-worker, 10 years she waited for that appointment for conservatorship. And she got it the day that her card was put on the altar in five days. God gave her an appointment. As a matter of fact, she goes on Monday. <coughs> God didn't forget. You are God's chosen and special people. You are a group of royal priests. Now he gets into when I start to tell you who you are. I bring you as a people and now you become a group. Not a clique, but a group. It's different when you're a group versus a clique because a group comes together under the same mindset and the same accord. A clique talks about particular and specific things. You'll get allies to come together for the sake of a clique. But a group of people that love God, it doesn't matter what you look like. It don't matter where you came from. It don't matter your history. It doesn't matter your background. The common goal is that we are royalness. Thank you, Sister Andrea, that we realize we, we royalness. <laughs> he said, God has brought you. Wait a minute. Now he goes back to talking about us. God has brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now you must tell all the wonderful things he has done. See, when you become the one that God loves, you're going to tell everybody else about God's love. See, as we get ready and start preparing to start going out into the street, it's your testimony that's going to mean something to people. Because, see, people don't want to hear the fabricated stuff. They want to know how much does God love you? What, what is God to you? And when you turn around and you can tell somebody, well, I was once in darkness, but God turned around and brought me out into the light. It's the light that you see in me. It's not my words. Because God said this to me, and I wrote this down. God loves us 
because the character of God is the character of love. God loves us because of what is in him. He don't love us for us because we're still a wretch undone. He loves us because of him, because he sees us as his royalness that he loves. And what he loves, he imparts in. And what he imparts in, he turns around and loves back. Now, you must tell the wonderful things he has done. The scriptures say, once you were nobody, now... <laughs> You are God's people. See, I remember when I was a nobody. See, I remember when my name didn't mean nothing. See, and in the earth, your name don't mean nothing because you could put somebody up on a pedestal one day in the earth and then the next day they're crucifying him. But see, in God, your name always stays in the light. Your name always rings in the heart of people. Why? Not because of you. Because God said here, he said, I love you because of what's in me. He saw his image when he sent his son to the cross. He said, and I'm willing to die for them because it's not them I see. It's my son I see. But because you're the benefactor of what my son had to do for you, I'm going to love you like you ain't never experienced love before. I'm going to shower you with love because I see my son every time I look at you. You're not perfect, but I see him. Woo! He said, I'm blessing you because of my son. Once you were nobody, now you are God's people. At one time, no one had mercy on you. What? You mean, you mean, I couldn't even get a cup of water. See, when people think that they can put limitations on you and your life and they can hold back your blessings, then people will keep their foot on you. But the moment you realize and understand, I forgot that somebody loves me. I forgot that I was loved before I even knew what love really meant. And as a matter of fact, because he loves me, there is no weapon formed against me that can prosper. You can't put a foot on my neck because my neck don't belong to you. I belong to God. Woo! See, people don't understand the depth of love that takes place when God said, for God so loved the world. We go read it. He said, I gave up my precious thing because of the love that I saw in you that was really him. We, ooh, hold on, y'all. At one time, no one had mercy on you. Now, God has treated you with kindness. So when people can't love on you, when people don't understand you, you just got to know that there's a God that is loving on me that is greater than anything that doesn't love me. People will back you up in a corner when they think that they got you isolated and figured out and telling you that they don't love you. You don't have to love me. Because God loves me at the end of the day. And see, when you can get comfortable with being in your own skin, knowing that there is a God that said, the skin that I put on you, I love you for who you are. We'll wait for somebody to tell us that they love him. And God said, do you understand that I love you? Do you know every morning that you wake up, I put creation before you because it's yours? We're going to read it. We're going to read it. We're going to read it. Let's, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I just got some scriptures I want to share with you tonight. Nothing that you ain't never heard before. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. And I'm going to read two verses out of that, verse 6 and 7. I said, God, you really love us. People are busy operating in superficial love. Temporary love. Love that comes with conditions. Operating on crazy love. Love that is un un unattainable. You're chasing a false pretense of love. And God said, my love doesn't come with any type of conditions. Just obey me. 
First Corinthians chapter 13, verse six out of the CEV translation. It says love rejoices in the in the truth. I'm going I'm to I'm read that again. What I got to keep talking about when you keep believing lies, you keep empowering the liar to keep lying. When you keep believing lies, you keep empowering the liar to keep lying. Love rejoices in the truth. See, God's love looks for truth, and that's where he gets excited. What is truth? We've been talking about it the whole entire month of February. The truth series, it's his word. His word is made up of truth. It's wrapped in truth. He said, and if love rejoices in the truth, do you know he's in love with his word? And that's why he said, when you speak it, I automatically become giddy over you all over again. I start to get excited and see you again like fresh new love. Wake up every morning with tender mercies because you're speaking my language. There is a language of love. His word. When you speak it, he said, I rejoice in it. Listen, love rejoices in the truth, but not in evil. Everything in the world is evil. But we'll love the stuff of the world before we love what God loves. He said, and when you start to love the stuff of the world, it becomes evil and it does not have a voice. Nothing in the world carries a voice. It carries an echo because it reminds you of the things, what you think you want to have, what you think that you need. And you know how something keeps echoing over and over and over and over again? It sounds like it's coming from there, but by the time the echo is down there and you're chasing an echo, God said, I need you to hear my voice. My voice is clear. Look at what verse 7 says, and I love that this was broken down like this. Love is always supportive. God can uphold and defend and become your total advocate because he loves you. When I read this, love is always supportive. God's word, he said, I will defend the one I love. I will support the one that I love. I will protect and uphold the one that I love. See, every time you think you're going down, God said, I'm the one with my hand up underneath you and I'm lifting you up because love lifts. There was an old school song back in the day, Love Lifted Me. That doggone Janie Johnson would sing that thing from Friendship Baptist Church. And when she said, love lifted me, you got to know it was God's love that lifted you. Let my God, Jesus. When you think about when you were at your lowest and nobody could give you a card to encourage you. Nobody could give you a word to speak over you. Nobody could say anything. But the love of God has a way of breaking down all of what you could feel and bring you back up into a place. That's why he said love is always supportive. Why God loves us. His desire is to be able to be our advocate. He said I want to speak for you. Because see, sometimes we get dumbfounded and don't know what to say. And God said, let me speak for you and be your advocate. I want to be your greatest supporter. Because a lot of times we're looking for the words to say and we end up messing up. But God said, you can never mess up with my word. He's, <laughs> love is always supportive. Then he says, loyal. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that God is always loyal? His love never fails us. God's word won't cheat on us and give us half of what we think we ought to have. God said, I exposed you to everything. So I'm no respect of person. If I told you I'm going to do it for you, then I'm going to do it for you. And then I'm going to do it for you. And then I'm going to do it for you. Because I don't have particulars. I, all I know is that I want to support what's mine. I want to love on what's mine and be loyal to it. The world will change on you instantly. But God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm loyal to the end. 
Woo! Love is hopeful when it feels like I've given up. He said, I'm letting you know. Jesse ain't saying, God said, keep hope alive. Because his word says hope deferred. When you put hope on the back burner, it makes your heart sick. He said, you got to keep hope in front of you to remind you, God, I know it might not happen today, but I got hope, oh God, because you love me, because you told me that you love me, and every promise that you made to me is yes and amen. So I got to keep hope. I can't let go. Then he turns around and says, and trusting. Uh-oh. Love is trusting. You can trust God's love because his love is truth. You can't trust a lie. But you can always trust the truth. He's, my Lord Jesus. Go, hold, hold your places right there. Am I holding our places right there? Because I want to, no, go to 1 Corinthians now, chapter number 1. Hold your places there. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. Keep that in mind. Love, the latter is trusting. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. Still out of the CEV translation. And verse 26. I said, Paul was a bad man, boy. He'd get the word across. Greatest persecutor of the church turned around to be the greatest lover of God. That's why no matter where you start is where you end out in this thing. Because most often we think that we've been cast out and cast aside. But God will blind you and give you vision all over again and make you start afresh. Because everything out there in the world is already full of blindness and darkness. And we got the remedy for light. <sighs> We got the remedy for light, Minister Kev. He gave us the recipe when he said, here's the ingredients. Obey. And not the obey that go on your seafood. He said, obey. Take that bad boy. Listen, don't get some good old obey and put it on, on some, some seafood. It just, it covers everything. Every flavor. God said, you got that. You got that. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 out of CEV, it says, My dear friends, remember what you were when God chose you. Got to be careful. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. He said, remember what you were when God chose you. Anybody bold enough to remember what they were? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Remember what you were when God chose you. The people of this world didn't think that many of you were wise. Because we acted like nobody loved us. We acted sick on stupid. But in the process of it, he said, do you remember what you were? The world didn't even take you seriously, even if you did act wise. He said, only a few of you were in places of power. Good Lord Jesus. And not many of you came from important families. See, I'm here to tell you right now today. See, it ain't your bloodline. It's your bloodline. Because see, your bloodline is being healed in the physical. But in the spiritual, your bloodline was already pure and secure from day one. He said, and not many of you came from important families. See, God said, I don't want you to have no excuses why I love you. Well, God, I know I can't go, you know, and be who I really am because of what I've been through in my life and because what I didn't have. And, you know, I didn't have a mother. I didn't have a daddy. You know, I, I came up on the wrong side of the tracks. This happened to me. That happened to me. God said, that's all good. That's a part of your testimony, but that is not your bloodline. See, you got to know that you've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. You've been filled with a DNA that can't nobody deny you of because he said, when I love you and you obey me, you got access to every good 
thing that I've already established for you. That's why he said you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. That's something that you got to embed in yourself until you start walking like it, talking like it, acting like it, moving like it. Because if you don't talk to yourself and tell yourself where you come from, you'll fall privy to like what the, uh, the, the prodigal son did. He ended up with the pigs and knew that he came from royalty. Your situation will dumb you down and make you think that you have not been chosen. He said, wait a minute, what am I doing here with the pigs? I got a whole slew of benefits and blessings that was left at home for me. Give me my inheritance and you think you got everything. You got nothing. When you get back to your rightful place, you got everything. But when you think that you out there operating on your own and doing what you think you know to do, you got nothing. And that's why we keep hitting our back and our head up against the wall. But the moment we come to our senses and obey, he said, I got windows that have not been opened up yet in heaven that's waiting to pour down a fresh rain on you. God can't deny us. He can't hold back his blessings. He said, because my word won't return back to me, boy. If I said it to you, just obey. Just obey. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't have to have a title to get the benefits. I just got to obey. I don't have to act like nobody else. I just got to obey. Call me. Oh, God. Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. What am I Jesus. Verse 27 said, But God chose the foolish things of this world to put the wise to shame. See, we want the world to mesmerize us. And God said, I'm trying to get the world to see that you're the one mesmerizing them. Because they still trying to figure out how you standing when all hell is breaking loose. They still trying to figure out why your tears are not long drawn out tears. I might cry for a moment, but joy is coming in the morning. I might feel a little despair in my body. He said, but in the midst of it, what did he say in 1 Corinthians? He turned around and said, where, where my, see, this is when you need your Bible. First, hold your places right there. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I think y'all know where I'm going. I think y'all know where I'm going. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm in 1 Corinthians. Let me go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 says, we are like clay jars in which this treasure is stored. The real power comes from God and not from us. See, when you understand that you have been chosen by God and when you understand that you've been loved by the Father, see, the real power of you standing, it's not in your own might. It's not in your own strength because you ain't got enough strength to stand on your own because the devil is looking to slap you down every opportunity that he gets. He said, that's why you got to depend on my love and you got to operate in my power because when you call on me, he said, I know how to show up. He said, the real power comes from God and not from us. We often suffer. Woo! See, it ain't, it ain't a fact that I'm not going to suffer. He said, you're going to suffer often, but you got to know where your power comes from. Because your power to obey him, he said, I'll be a shield. I'll be your buckler. The real power comes from God and not from us. We often suffer, but we are never crushed. I might suffer a little bit. I might even suffer a lot. But God will never allow the enemy to crush you. Before you get crushed, he'll turn around and lift you up with wings of an eagle and put 
you into a place to prepare you and preserve you. Even when we don't know what to do. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Oh, God, I'm pacing. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I act like this? Should I move like that? He said, I'm so glad. He said that I even got you with that stance. He said, because if you don't understand to just obey, he said, even when we don't know what to do, we never give up. See, I might not know what to do today, but I know that I can't give up from calling on him. I know I can't give up from trusting him. I know I can't give up from telling him, God, I need you like the air that I breathe today. I can't die like this in this situation. Woo, God. Oh. Verse 9 says, in times, plural, in times of trouble. That's more trouble than a little bit. <laughs> but you know what I love? I don't care how many times trouble come. He said, Ooh, God is with us. I don't care how many times I fall into trouble. Because God loves us, trouble don't last always. Trouble lasts for the world always because they don't know that there's been a way of escape made for them. So they stay stuck like they in a maze and don't know how to get out. And when we are knocked down, we get up again. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me, even if I get knocked down, even if it feels like I lose it for a minute, I'm not good. I'm not gonna stay there because God said girl I love you man I love you get up on your feet stand up wait a minute we gotta go back because we gotta read this because he called us he said the weak and feeble because sometimes you don't feel strong enough to stand up on your own two feet he said but that's when you find on the left and the right he said that I'll give you angels to uphold you It might not be a spiritual angel, but it might be a sister Charlotte and a brother Jerry that might come on your left and your right and say, come on, we bigger than this. We better than this. Come on, we stronger than this. Come on and see, that's why when you go back, we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. He said, I call you as a group. One could put a thousand to flight. Two could put ten thousand to flight. That's why we got to understand, are we kingdom or congregation? Because the congregation is going to be concerned about, well, what are they going to say about me? How are they going to look at me? What are they going to talk about after they lift me up? But the kingdom says, I'll grab your arms and hold you until you're strong enough to walk on your own because when we get out there into darkness we got to know that we walking together i won't walk alone we can't walk alone yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i'm not fearing no evil because god you're with me your rod and your staff <laughs> oh god i'm sending help from the sanctuary because i love you just that much i just asked you to obey me that's it listen listen Woo. go go to psalm chapter eight go to psalm chapter eight psalm chapter eight Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Psalm chapter 8. Psalm chapter 8. In verse number 3 out of the CEV translation. 
glory. Psalm 8 and 3. He said, who God? Psalm 8 and verse 3 out of the CEV translation. He said, I often think of the heavens your hands have made and of the moon and stars you put in place. What kind of man start to think about what God has done? Like, See, God wants you to think on things that are bigger and better than the things you're thinking about. See, when David started speaking, David started talking about the majesty of how God's hands can create anything, can do anything, can operate in any measure. But we in our minute thinking, because we forget that God loves us, we start thinking about the cares of life. The moment we wake up, we start thinking about what we don't have, where we need to be, what somebody else is doing. God said, think about me. Let me prove to you who I am when you start to think about me and what I did. David said, then I ask, why do you care about us humans? See, what, what, do you, what makes you so head over heels crazy about us when we keep failing you? Why are you so attracted to us God said, I love you because that's the truth of who I am. I don't know nothing else but love. When I sent my son, I sent him because of love. All I can hear right now is, is the praise team. It was his. You thought I was worth saving. See, because when you understand, God's word is like a symphony to you. He's constantly singing your praises because he said, I know what I made in you because I'm in you. Why do you care about us humans? Why, listen y'all, why are you concerned for us weaklings? He said, I know you're not strong enough. To bear anything. But yet I know with me. You can do all things. As a matter of fact. He said in Romans. You're more than a conqueror. That's why I love you. That's why I constantly think about you. With your weak self. What? David said. I know I'm a weakling. But you so mindful of me, even in my weakness, you're thinking about me. He said, because I see me in you. I'm loving you in spite of your weakness. So why not get on the page? Because if you know how much I love you and you start to obey me, I'm going to bless you. <laughs> Everybody not going to be able to handle the you that understands how to obey. Because people like disobedience. But when you find a person that is willing to obey God in spite of, he said in verse 5, you made us a little lower than you yourself. And you have crowned us with glory and honor. Then he turns around and he says this. He said, you... Let us rule what? Everything. Everything your hands have made. See, we don't understand the authority that we have because we choose to obey when it's convenient. And when the enemy is beating us down, we won't obey so we don't recognize we rule everything his hands has made. He said, everything that I made is yours. When he assigned Adam to name everything, to speak into the elements of a creation that he made for him, 
Do you realize because we were exchanged at Calvary, the type of authority he gave us? You let us rule everything your hands have made and you put all of it under our power. Your power is so official that Satan tries to copy your power. See, the devil can't operate with nothing, but he can try to mimic God's power, God's authority. But when the real sons and daughters of the earth rise up, and exercise our authority, do you realize the power that comes with us? Neighborhoods will change. Family members will change. People and circumstances around you will change. You will change. See, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you ought to see the authority of God every time you look at yourself. He said, and you put all of it under our power, the sheep and the cattle and every wild animal, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and all ocean create cre creatures. Our Lord and ruler, your name is wonderful everywhere on earth. So it don't matter where I go, his name is wonderful in the whole earth. So when I go as a representative I'm not representing my name. I'm representing the name of God. So wherever I show up, I can either make his name great or I can make his name sad and, and depressed. How do I make my, his name great? Obey. Speak his word. In season and out of season. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Mm, mm, mm. Deuteronomy chapter 7. And I'm going to read, starting at verse, oh boy. I really want, I'm going to start at verse 1. But I was really after six, but I might as well just read one. Might as well. We got a whole 10 minutes. I got 10 minutes to take my time and read this Deuteronomy chapter seven. Did I tell y'all chapter seven? Okay. Verse one. Thank you. <clears throat> People of Israel, the Lord your God will help you. Take the land of the Hittites, the Gergeshites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. He said, Moses told the people, the Lord your God will help you. See, whatever is in your life and in your way, God already told the people, the Lord will help you to take it. See, you, anything right now that you are fighting up against, that you are struggling, you don't have to. Because God loves you so much, he said that I'll fight for you. He said, the Lord your God will help you. See, the strategy of the Lord is to bring us to victory every time. That's his plan. And when he turned around and said, these seven nations have more people, listen y'all, <clears throat> and are stronger than Israel. Some stuff in your life may be stronger than you. But this is why God said, you can't take it on your own. You need me to obey me that I can move. See, God is always speaking strategy. Get away from them. Don't go that direction. Don't move there. Don't talk about that. Don't operate. See, God gives strategy. But most often, we want to be the driver. 
well, God, yeah, it's not that bad. And we drive ourselves into the place of wickedness. But listen, I'm not going to talk. I want to read it. These seven nations have more people and are stronger than Israel. But when, <laughs> I got excited, y'all. But when you attack them, he didn't say you was going to curtail. He didn't say that they were going to beat you. He said that they're stronger than you, but they won't win. See, there's stuff that's going to come up against you that seems stronger, but it won't win. It won't win. There's a counterattack to every attack when you are in God. Just because he loves you. He said, listen, they're stronger than Israel, but when you attack them, the Lord will force them out of the land. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm so excited because he said, I'll get them out of their place where they were trying to drive you. See, you got to know the stuff that's trying to push and back you up against the wall. God said, I'll call them out and then kill them right in the midst of it. See, some stuff is still hiding from you that you don't know is there. And it's tearing you up. But God said, I'll call it out. I'll kill it. Listen to what he said. He said, but when you attack them, the Lord will force them out of the land. Then you must destroy them. Listen, without mercy. See, when you start obeying God, anything that keeps trying to come at you and try to draw your attention, you got to kill it forever. Don't go back and dabble with it. Don't go back and say, well, it didn't really hurt me that bad this time. So let me do this this time. Well, I, it didn't hurt me to talk to them that time. So let me talk to them there. Listen, you've got to, he said, the moment you recognize, name the enemy. I love you that much that I'm getting ready to give you an assignment. Start naming anything that's causing you to not operate in the full love and the capacity that I have for you. Call it all out. Even the stuff that keeps hiding. Call it out. Some things don't want to let you go. Some things don't want to detach itself from you. But why do I keep getting angry every time this season? Why do I keep falling for the same situation every year? Why every three months I keep getting caught up and tied in to the same nonsense? When you look at your life from that perspective, God said, start naming it. People of Israel. The Lord, your God, will help you. You're the land of God. He said, I'll help you get the land back. Because I see myself in that. I love this land. Y'all know I say, they, they say America the beautiful? That they got, look, what, what you, they, they got the, all the songs for America. I dare you to sing a song for uh, the America of your spirit the liberty and freedom the justice of your spirit because Moses told them call it out once and for all call it out then he said the Lord will force them out of the land see they got to get uncomfortable when you keep calling it out Satan in the name of Jesus I see you I see this situation that keeps coming up every year. I notice this level of depression. I notice this addiction. I notice this person comes around. I notice, I notice. And when you got notice on the enemy, the enemy has got to expose himself. Stuff is still hiding because we won't call it out. God said, if I love you, call it. I got you. He said, the Lord your God will help you. Take the land. Then, then, then you must destroy them without mercy. Well, you know, I just can't talk to you for right now. But maybe down the... Stay your course, devil. 
See, when we start calling stuff out, see, we wait for those specific services where we call out demons and start speaking and, and calling them out. But see, we know our own demons that is causing us to not operate in the love of God. Because he said, this is the truth series. I'm speaking truth because my word is true. And I'll back you up as long as you speak in the truth. My mother used to always tell us, she said, if you lying, I can't do nothing with you. But if you speak in the truth, I'll go to that school and I'll back you up because I know the truth. Listen to this, y'all. Don't make any peace treaties with them. Don't, don't compromise. Well, if you do this, I'll do that. Moses said God told him to tell the people, don't make no peace treaties. Don't, don't give them no other recourse of action. He said, and don't, this was important right here. Verse three says, and don't let your sons and daughters marry any of them. I almost fell back against the wall. See, when God loves you and he's given us the truth, you won't let nothing around you that's precious to you get Trick, uh, trickled and tied up into any other yoke of bondage because we become spiritually sensitive and aware that if I'm obeying God I want everything around me to obey God and I don't want them intermingled with any sin that's going to easily beset them how easy is it to marry sin I now pronounce you husband and wife and here you got them with a cigarette addiction. You got them with an addiction that they operating in false love and our prayer every morning on the prayer call, we break and destroy generational curses. They will not enter into the present bloodline of the people. Anything that's attached to you that you love, if you do, those people will lead your descendants to worship other gods and to turn their backs on the Lord. Why would we turn our backs on what's truth? Why would we compromise and settle for somebody not loving us? Because see, any attachment to these things causes us to recognize that we are operating like bastards that we don't know that there is a love that really truly loves us. So we operate like an orphan. He said, that will make him very angry and he will quickly destroy Israel. No more will we see people destroyed. We gotta tell them the truth. If you turn your back on God's love, he said, I'll quickly destroy you. But look at what verse five. So when you conquer these nations, tear down the altars where they worship their gods. See, don't give them a reason to come back to have to pull you back to a place. When you leave and destroy it, tear everything down. I'm not talking about physically. God, I declare that nothing good will come out of coming back to that place again. <clears throat> when you conquer these nations, tear on the altars where they worship their gods, break up their sacred stones, cut down the poles that they use in worshiping the goddess Asherah and throw their idols in the fire. See, God said, you're not going to worship and acknowledge anything but me. Anything else, it will destroy you. Now, verse six was where I was going to, and we got three minutes. Israel, <laughs> you are the chosen people of the Lord, your God. You are. There are many nations on this earth, but he chose only Israel to be his very own. Don't you know you are God's very own? 
He is so head over heels excited for you. He said, I called you my own from the beginning. He said, you were the weakest of all nations, but the Lord chose you because he loves you and because he had made a promise to your ancestors. I had you on my mind before you were on my mind. I thought about you. Then with his mighty arm, he rescued you from the king of Egypt who had made you his slaves. Verse 9, and this is where we're ending. You know that the Lord your God is the only true God. So love him and obey his commands and he will faithfully keep his agreement with Lord Jesus. He said, I'm going to faithfully keep my agreement with you if you just love and obey me. He said, and your descendants for a thousand generations. I'm not just going to do it for you. I'm doing it for everything in your lineage to a thousand generations. See, we, we, we think we try to set up and leave an inheritance physically for this earth. We should be trying to leave an inheritance spiritually for everything that's attached to us. People in your workplace, they need to know they have an inheritance. They're connected and don't even recognize it yet. The people out there that's operating in darkness, they don't know they got a benefit plan of somebody that loves them and they don't have to compromise. Tonight, I just want us to recognize that we're a part of a kingdom that is advancing day by day. We're growing stronger day by day because God is revealing himself to us moment by moment. He's concerned for us and he loves us unconditionally. Stand to your feet all over this room. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is awesome. He's so awesome. He's, he's preparing us. He's preparing us, and I'm so thankful for it. Glory to God. As we get ready to be dismissed, we thank God for all of you that are here on tonight. Those of you that are out there that tuned in and watched, make sure if you haven't as of yet, subscribe to the channel, do so. And hit the like button, share it, so that that way somebody else can be empowered. Because a lot of people out here in the world don't know that somebody really loves them. And see, one thing I tell people, I said, listen, you might not feel the love from people in the physical, so you might as well give God a chance. If you ain't felt love like what God wants to pour on you, give him a chance. Give him a chance. As we get ready to conclude, let us just recite our kingdom language confession. Just repeat after me. I speak the wisdom of God always. And the circumstances of life are subdued before me I have the mind of Christ and my outlook on life is from the perspective of the word of God I am I am making unstoppable progress in my life in Jesus name amen you are dismissed